Our second speaker of the day is Olya Mandelstam, and she's talking about compact formulas for McDonald polynomials and quasi-symmetric McDonald polynomials. Take it away. Uh, hi, so thank you to the organizers for making this wonderful online conference happen. And it's, uh, it's very nice to see so many faces from around the world. And uh, I think some, some of these people couldn't have made it if the conference was in person. So uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, so this talk is joint with uh, Sylvie Cortell, Jim Havlin, Sarah Mason, and Lauren Williams, and uh, some of my co-authors are, are here, so they could also answer questions if there are any. So uh, my talk is split into three parts. So first I will tell the story of how McDonald polynomials uh, are deeply connected to a statistical mechanics model called the asymmetric simple exclusion process uh, through combinatorics of multi-line cubes. Uh, Next, I will talk about quasi-symmetric functions and uh, introduce a new quasi-symmetric McDonald polynomial. And finally, I'll talk about some other, multi, uh, some other applications of multi-line cues that arise from um, uh, connections to McDonald polynomials. Okay, so I'll start with a very brief introduction to symmetric polynomials uh, that will uh, serve as a warm-up for defining McDonald polynomials. So a uh, polynomial is symmetric if it's invariant under uh, permutation of its variables, and it has some, some nice natural bases. So for example, the monomial basis. Uh, another important basis is sure functions. And oh, okay. so, uh, so here's uh, one reason why the sure functions are a, a very natural basis for the ring of symmetric functions. So let's start with the standard inner product on this ring. Then shear functions are the unique basis satisfying the following two properties. So first, they're orthogonal with respect to this inner product. And second, they're upper triangular with respect to the monomial basis. Uh, and the, the nicest way to describe them is uh, through a combinatorial formula. Uh, where we write them as a sum over certain fillings of Tableau. Okay, so now I will define McDonald polynomials in an analogous way. So let's consider uh, the ring of symmetric functions uh, with rational coefficients in Q and T. And so uh, in 1988, McDonald introduced a family of homogeneous symmetric polynomials that are uniquely determined by the following two properties. So first, it's an orthogonal basis for uh, this ring in Q and T with respect to the McDonald inner product, which is the QT generalization of the, of the usual inner product. And second, they're upper triangular with respect to the monomial uh, symmetric functions. Okay, so uh, similar to uh, shear functions, uh, we can describe them combinatorially using a tableau formula. So this formula was first discovered by Hagelin, Heyman, Lur in 2005. Uh, and I won't describe uh, the formula itself. I will just say that, uh, so we can write these polynomials as um, a generating function over some fillings of tableau where each tableau has a weight in X, Q, and T. And there are other formulas uh, by Ram and Yep and also Lenart that uh, use different, different methods. So here's an example of a McDonald polynomial P21. Uh, so you can see even in this uh, simple case, it's a, it's a slightly complicated uh, rational polynomial in QT. Okay. So here are some important properties, McDonald polynomials. So since their introduction, they uh, have become a central object uh, in algebraic combinatorics for several reasons. So one of the reasons is that the McDonald polynomials specialize to uh, many of many important uh, polynomials that have already been playing uh, a very uh, a, a special role in 
representation theory, uh, algebraic combinatorics, algebraic geometry, and other areas. So, for example, um, so at q equals t, they specialize to sure functions. At q equals zero, we get Hall Littlewood. At t equals zero, we get q Whitaker. Uh, we also get Jack polynomials with a certain specialization. Uh, okay, so. Uh, there is also a non-symmetric version of McDonald polynomials, which we call E alpha. So they're indexed by weak compositions. So weak composition uh, is also known as a, a usual composition, which may have uh, parts of size zero. And so these uh, non-symmetric polynomials were introduced by McDonald to study the symmetric uh, P lambdas. Uh, and they were further studied in connection to rep the representation theory of double affine Heck algebras by Optum and Heckman and also Terednik. Uh, and I should mention that, uh, that one, one of the easiest ways to construct the P lambdas uh, was as a certain weighted sum of the E alphas uh, because the E alphas can be computed as uh, simultaneous eigenfunctions of certain operators that are uh, products of generators of the Heck algebra. Uh, okay, and to complete the picture, uh, the E alphas, they specialize to uh, de majeure atoms, which are themselves non-symmetric building blocks of the shear functions. Okay, so uh, now I will move on to the second part of the story. So I'll describe a a uh, statistical mechanics model called the ASAP. Uh, and in our setting, we uh, are looking at the, a multi-species ASAP on a circle. So in general, the classical ASAP is, uh, is a one-dimensional particle process. Uh, so it's on, uh, it's, on a, it's on a lattice that in our case is finite, but it may also be an infinite lattice. Uh, and at each time step, uh, where we have a discrete pr uh, process, any two adjacent particles may swap with some probability. And if the lattice has a boundary, then uh, particles may enter or exit at the boundary locations. Um, but in, in our case, we, uh, so we don't have a boundary since uh, our ASAP is on a circle. So we're going to fix uh, a lattice on um, on n sites, so in this picture n is 8, and we have a multi-species ASAP, which means that we're going to choose uh, n particles with non-negative integer weights. And, and those different weights uh, correspond to the different species. So we arrange our collection of weights uh, into a partition, so weakly decreasing. So in this picture, our collection of weights is three, two, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. And so the ASAP of type lambda uh, is a Markov chain whose states are uh, represented by compositions that are rearrangements of the parts of lambda. Uh, and these compositions are drawn on a circle. So uh, for composition alpha, we consider alpha one to be adjacent to alpha n. And our convention is to uh, read the um, to read the particles on the circle from from the top, uh, moving clockwise. So this state in the example is one two two zero 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 three two. And the uh, so the the transitions of this Markov chain are. Uh, they de depend on some fixed parameter t, which is between zero and one. And the possible transitions are swaps of any two adjacent particles, where we say that if, um, so the, the larger particles have a tendency to move counterclockwise. So in a pair of particles, if the smaller one is on the left, they swap with rate one, and otherwise they swap with rate t. So that's our Markov chain. And so the natural question for Markov chain is, uh, can we find an explicit formula for the stationary probabilities? And, and what that means is if we run this process for infinite time, uh, what is the probability of observing any particular state? So let me show an example of how we compute that. 
So let's take the state 0, 1, 0, 2, 2 as an example. And let's look at all of the transitions coming out of that state. Uh, so uh, notice that all of these transitions have a denominator 5. Uh, and that's so that the sum of them is 1, since um, sum of all outgoing transitions needs to be 1. So we complete this picture by drawing the rest of the states and all the possible transitions between them. And then we do some linear algebra to compute the, uh, the, eigen, the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 1 of the transition matrix. And we get these nice polynomials in T as our probabilities. Uh, so let me explain here my notation. So this PR tilde, uh, that's what I call the unnormalized probability. So that corresponds to the polynomials uh, without the one over Z factor. And the, the Z is, is the normalizing factor. So that's just the sum of all of these unnormalized probabilities. And it's also called the partition function. And uh, in general, in statistical mechanics models, we pay special attention to partition functions because they uh, carry a lot of information about the, the process that they, that they represent. So our goal for the next few slides is going to be to, uh, to explain, uh, explain explicit formulas for these unnormalized probabilities. So uh, I should say that uh, the, there's, there's been uh, the deep connection between McDonald polynomials and statistical mechanics has been, has been known for quite a while. And so here are some, some examples of, uh, of works that have studied this connection. So in 2010, Dikonis and Ram uh, gave a probabilistic interpretation for coefficients of McDonald polynomials in the power sum basis. Uh, using a Markov chain on partitions. Uh, also, Borden and Corwin studied uh, McDonald point processes uh, with uh, probability measures that uh, were derived from McDonald polynomials. Uh, but most relevant to uh, our setting was this theorem by Cantini, Dehir, and Wheeler from 2015. So, their theorem says that. Uh, if we sum over all unnormalized probabilities of uh, a sub on a circle with particle types given by lambda, so which is the partition function uh, corresponding to the a sub type lambda, then we get a specialization of the McDonald polynomial p lambda. And um, so a, ref a more refined uh, case is when a mu is a partition, then the unnormalized probability of state mu is the non-symmetric, uh, is a specialization of the non-symmetric McDonald. Okay. So uh, let me now describe a combinatorial formula for probabilities of the ASAP uh, that ar arises from probability theory. So through this object called a multi-line Q or MLQ. So a multi-line Q is, uh, is an object that consists of a ball system, which is some arrangement of balls on a lattice, and a queuing algorithm, which is a way to pair balls from rows above to rows below, uh, which is represented by these blue lines. Uh, and uh, we assign to each pairing and each ball system a certain weight in T. And if we sum over all the weights that correspond to uh, states of the A sub, then we, we can compute the probabilities of those states. So I won't tell you anything else about this object in, except how to associate a multi line Q to a state of the A sub. Uh, so we simply need to read off the labels from the bottom row to get the state of the A sub. So in this case, we read off the labels, we get 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 2, 1. So that's the state of the A sub that this multi-line Q corresponds to. And so, so uh, multi-line Qs have actually been uh, a well-studied object in probability theory. So uh, specifically in, in queuing, theory, uh, you can consider 
the uh, the top row of a queue to be uh, the customers, and then the row below is the services, and we're trying to pair, uh, we're trying to match the customers to the services. So uh, in 2007, Ferrari and Martin discovered that uh, you can use multi-line queues to compute probabilities for the ASAP and the T equals zero case. And uh, recently, James Martin was able to extend this result to the general T case. And uh, so he has this theorem here, which uh, I'll show an example of on the next slide. So the theorem says that if we sum over all multi-line queues whose bottom row is alpha, then we get the probability of state alpha. So here's an example of, of this theorem. So let's say we want uh, to find the probability of state 221100. So I drew out all the possible multi-line queues with 221100 in the bottom row. And their weights are some rational function in T. And if we uh, add them up, then we get the unnormalized probability of, of this state. OK. And so, uh, so a corollary of Cantini, Dehir, and Wheeler tells us that if we sum over all the multi-line queues uh, whose type uh, is some rearrangement of lambda, then we get a specialization of the McDonald polynomial P lambda. And so uh, our goal from here was to find a way to generalize the multi-line queues to incorporate parameters x, uh, x1 through xn and q uh, in order to interpolate between the two sides of this equation. So, uh, so in other words, we wanted to uh, generalize the multi-line queues to give us the full McDonald polynomial. And so that is what we did with Sylvie Cortel and Lauren Williams. Uh, so we, uh, we generalize the multi-line queues with parameters x, q, and t uh, to get the following results. So first of all, we get the full McDonald polynomial p lambda as a sum over all multi-line queues uh, that correspond to some permutation of, of lambda. Uh, so for more refined results, we get non-symmetric McDonald polynomials uh, from for multi-line queues of type mu, when mu is a partition. And in general, when mu is a composition, then we get a related family of functions called permuted basement McDonald polynomials. Uh, and third, we get back as a corollary the result of James Martin about the probabilities of the ASAP. Okay, so here's a quick example of this result. So let's say we want to compute uh, P21 in three variables, X1, X2, X3. Then we draw all the possible multi-line queues uh, that, that have particles of type two, one, and zero. Uh, so each of them has a weight in X, Q, and T. We add them up and we get the McDonald polynomial. So it turns out that our multi-line queue formula is more compact than other known formulas for uh, P lambda. So I will touch on this more uh, at the end of my talk. Okay, so uh, now we'll move on to the second part of my talk. Uh, so luckily for me, Vasu already defined uh, quasi-symmetric functions. So I will just give a quick review. So recall that a function is uh, symmetric if it is permutation invariant, so its coefficients are, are equal under permutation of variables. Now a function is quasi-symmetric if uh, its coefficients are, uh, are equal under shifts of the indices of the monomials. And we have a natural basis, capital M gamma, indexed by strong compositions. For, for this ring of quasi-symmetric functions uh, where we fix the exponents determined by gamma and we take all possible shifts of, of the indices. Uh, and we can recover the symmetric monomial uh, functions m lambda by summing over 
uh, capital M gamma, where gamma is a permutation of lambda. And so now a very nice uh, uh, basis for quasi-symmetric uh, functions is the, the set of quasi-symmetric shear functions, which was discovered by Hagelin, Lodo, Mason, and Ben Willigenberg in 2011. So let's go back to, uh, to this picture uh, to put it in context. So on the left, we have our symmetric functions. On the right, we have our non-symmetric functions. And now the quasi-symmetric shear functions uh, are a natural object that refines shear functions. So, uh, so we, can, we can obtain S lambda by taking the sum over uh, the quasi-symmetric shears uh, indexed by gamma, where gamma is a, a permutation of lambda. And uh, so, so these, these are a very natural choice uh, to be called uh, quasi-symmetric shear functions because they actually lift many of the important combinatorial properties of shear functions to the quasi-symmetric setting. So for example, they give rise to quasi-symmetric Koska coefficients, a Peary rule, a refined little with Richardson rule, and they have other very nice properties. So we can define them uh, as a sum over Demijer atoms uh, through compression. So uh, let's recall the difference between a strong composition and a weak composition. So a strong composition has no zero parts and a weak composition may have zero parts and compression of a weak composition simply means removing the zeros. So if we sum over uh, all of the um, A alphas where alpha compresses to gamma, then we get the quasi-symmetric shear function. Okay, and so uh, the natural question to ask is, uh, can we find the right candidate to be a quasi-symmetric McDonald polynomial, uh, which specializes to the quasi-symmetric shear and also has the other desirable properties? So, uh, so that is what we did. So let me define uh, F alpha to be the weight generating function for multi-line Qs of type alpha in the variables X, Q, and T for any weak composition alpha. So recall that uh, F alpha specializes to the unnormalized probability of the ASAP uh, of, um, for state alpha. And so uh, our definition is very simple. So we define G gamma as uh, the sum over F alpha is where alpha compresses to gamma. So here's a quick example for G21 and G12. And uh, the symmetric McDonald polynomial is the sum over all of the F alphas. And so as a result, uh, P21 is a sum over uh, G uh, G21 and G12. So uh, this looks like a very natural definition here, but the, the, the important part was to discover that the F alphas were the correct functions to be summing over to get these quasi-symmetric polynomials. So, uh, so the theorem is the following. So this is uh, quasi-symmetric, which is immediate from the combinatorial definition with multi-line Qs. We get the McDonald polynomial by summing over the G gammas, where gamma is a permutation of alpha, uh, of, of lambda. Uh, and finally, we, uh, we get a QT generalization of the quasi-symmetric shear functions. So admittedly, we don't yet have too many applications for the G gammas. Uh, however, I, I do want to say that in the ASAP world, the G gamma specializes to uh, to some very interesting physical interpretation, uh, which is that it represents the unnormalized probability that particles are in a certain order gamma. So here's an example. So let's say we want to find the probability finding particles one, two, three arranged in the order three, two, one in an ASAP of size five. So that means that we want to know what's the probability of finding any one of these six configurations up to uh, cyclic rotation and we can compute that as the sum over G gamma, where gamma is a cyclic shift of three, two, one. 
So, so that's a physical interpretation of, of these functions. Okay. So finally, let me talk about some other ap applications of multi-line cues. So with multi-line cues, we got compact formulas for the P lambdas and the integral form J lambdas. So previously, the, the P lambdas were obtained as a linear combination of, of the non-symmetric E alphas with some complicated coefficients. And the E alphas themselves were obtained using the HHL formula. Uh, so you can see here a comparison of the number of terms between the HHL formula and, and our MLQ formula. So when lambda has distinct parts, the formulas are identical. However, when lambda has uh, repeated parts, then our formula is a nice improvement. Uh, and so we get the simplest known formula for uh, the P lambdas as a sum over multi-line Qs. And finally, we get a new compact formula for the modified McDonald polynomial H lambda. So H lambda is obtained through a, uh, a formal operation called plethism from, uh, from the normalized form of P lambda. So formally, that's just the substitution of, of variables uh, in a certain way. And so inspired by the combinatorial interpretation of plethism on multi-line cues, we ended up uh, finding a compact formula for uh, H lambda. So again, when parts are distinct, the formulas are identical, but when there are many repeated parts, then uh, our compact formula is more compact. And uh, I will stop there. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, here are my references. All right, let's uh, thank Olya for her excellent talk. We do have about three minutes for questions, so I'll pass that over to Gai. Um, uh, Bruce asks, what is known about the mixing time of ASAP on a circle, and is it related to McDonald polynomials? Um, I don't think it's related to McDonald polynomials. But also, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I'm not sure that, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that they're related. Um, okay. Uh, and Francois' question is partially answered, uh, but he asked about uh, modified McDonald polynomials, but I think that is okay. Um, then Vitya asked, um, so for the mixing time of ASAP, is there any like limiting phenomenon if you know uh, there that you know about like limit shape or law of large numbers? Uh, I, I do not know anything about the mixing time. I'm sorry. Okay, um, if you have any further questions, there's also Slack. So feel free to ask any other questions and continue the conversations there. Oh, there is one more question. We have one more minute. Uh, Christian asks, is there a compactness of MLQ formula related to the version of HHL that he gave? So uh, these formula, so the multi-line Q formula is related to HHL. So it's also a tableau formula of, of uh, the same flavor. So in fact, the set of multi-line Qs uh, gives a subset of HHL tableau. Uh, except we define our statistics slightly differently. So that's where the compactness comes from. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have for now. I can pass it on to Christian. All right, let's all thank Olya one more time.